Wow, what an awesome project. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm Penny Joy. I have the pleasure of being the president of the Rotary Club of Plymouth this year. And um, our project just follows along with the previous one very nicely. Um, we all know that education is the key to breaking the cycle of poverty. But in many parts of our world, education is a premium, and for girls especially, it is. Many times, girls are not able to go to school five to seven days every month because of a function of the female body. I want you to think about a child you know, and if they missed five to seven days of school every month, what would happen? Eventually, they drop out of school because it is impossible to keep up, and the cycle of poverty continues. The Rotary Club of Plymouth is working with an organization called Days for Girls. Days for Girls is an international organization that um, has cottage industries like ours in, the terms, in terms of chapters or teams in cities, towns all over the world. And we make this sustainable feminine hygiene kit and we send them around the world so that girls can stay in school. So, um, I'd like to tell you a whole lot more, but I think the girls that use the kit can tell you best. So we have a little video. Um, Liz, if you can cue that up. passion as a girl was to become a doctor. But since uh, my periods were getting in my way, spending my days because I was menstruating was really a lonely journey. My mama left me when I was very young, so when I started my menstruation, she was not there like to tell me or to guide me on what to do. Some girls, they don't attend school because of the Periods. That means that you're going to miss school like five days every month. Every time your menstruation comes, you are going to be just inside the house like you are sick because you can't go outside. In Kenya, it is very normal. You are told to have a boyfriend and then he can give you money to buy the pads. So you will just have to maybe sleep with the boy and then he will give you money to buy the pads and that is very risky for a girl because if you get pregnant there is no going on in school. Wait. My dream, my passion is to become a doctor. for girls kitty it is so beautiful i love it because of the colors that they use they make it they make you feel good they use the flannel material and the flannel material it is very soft it is very friendly it is easy to wash and it lasts three to four years it makes you feel like a very beautiful person i'm free i'm comfortable i, I can just jump the way i want i can play sports i can play basketball i can play football anything that i want to do I can, I am just confident about myself while in that Days for Girls kit. I want girls to stay in school. Maybe they will be the doctors of tomorrow, the president of tomorrow. You can't know now. So my passion is just to keep the girls in school and reach every girl outside there so that they can stay in school. I can leave now, I think. Uh, <laughs> but I, I want you to know that the problem is not just in Africa. It's worldwide. It's global. Even in our own country. We have um, Native Americans on reservations that are extremely poor and need this service. We've also given kits to um, women and girls that live in the very poorest zip code area of the city of Detroit. So the need is close 
also. So it's, it's everywhere. Days for Girls' mission is to put people like me out of business and open enterprises in the countries where the product is used, thereby supporting a local economy, putting women to work. But I don't think I'm going to be out of business for a while because the need is so great. And if I am, that's wonderful too. So the, the, an important part of it when a girl receives a Days for Girls kit is she's required to take part in an education class. And we call it the, the women's health class. And so in this class, the girls and their mothers learn about taking care of themselves, taking care of their body, why it functions the way it does. In the last five years, Days for Girls has also started a class called Men Who Know. That class is for the fathers, older brothers, and male teachers. And it's been very, very successful. And uh, so now when we go into a community, we, we try to run both of those classes. And we try to hire local people to teach the class because, you know, we trust people that look like us and talk like us. If they sent me over there, I can't speak Swahili or any other language, most any other country. Um, so the trust level goes down. So we try to hire local people to teach those classes. We have great results. Um, that's always, you know, we want to quantify everything. And um, in Uganda, the dropout rate in schools went from 38% to 8% um, within three years of girls receiving the kits. Um, in Kenya, 96% um, of the girls stayed in school once they received a kit. So we know the impact is large and huge. We also know that these kits last about three years because after three years they ask for a new kit. So go girls. So this is just some of the distribution that has taken place um, with our Plymouth Days for Girls team. And Thanks in part to many Rotarians, and most of you that have taken kits are in this room. Um, it started with Rick Karen, and actually Rick Karen was with me the day that I was introduced to Days for Girls. Um, he has taken multiple kits, 400, maybe more now, to um, Tanzania. In the last year, Kim Spiro took 400 to Ghana. The list goes on. My favorite story is our good friend Aruna, I begged her to take kits when she was going to India for a polio um, immunization. And she said, well, I might have room for 50. So I sent 50 kits, and she came back, and she said, oh, my gosh, I could have given away 500. <laughs> so um, now she's my, my new champion. So um, we're always looking for clubs that are doing um, worldwide service projects that might be interested in taking kits. Um, nurses that do um, overseas work, missionaries, um, like I said before, the need is great. Um, this is Aruna's project. Um, after she took the kids to India, she introduced me to the um, Multicultural Center. And before COVID, we were going to the Multicultural Center in Windsor once a month, working with immigrant women, teaching them how to make the kits. And they felt like they were doing something really useful. It wasn't just a craft project. Um, we had to have a translator because there's um, obviously a language barrier. And fortunately, their English was better than their language, my version of it. And one day at the end of the session, I thanked them. I always thanked them for coming and for their time. And one lady stood up and she, she was shaking, and she said, you no say thank you. This is important work, I know. I was speechless, and I, I, I'm sure I got in the car that day and cried half the way home, because these women have experienced the need. This is um, a group of girls from a um, girl's home in Uganda. That's the day they received the kits from the Plymouth team. And obviously, they're pretty excited. I would like to thank the Rotary Club of Plymouth for their continued support. The District 6400, we have managed to write several grants that continue to support this work. And anybody else that has um, 
supported this work so girls can stay in school. We do have a table in the Hub Club where you can see some more pictures uh, of our team working, and there's a kit there that you can take a look at. Thank you so much for your time.